Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at the Husqvarna 125B handheld two cycle leaf blower. Typical customer complaint is that the engine bogs, won't develop any power, they can't use it. So let's get started. First thing I do is I, on every 125B that comes in the door, I grab the air filter and I wiggle it. And if it's loose like it is here, I know what's got to be done. There's two screws under the insulator block that hold the carb boot to the cylinder. And it comes loose, it sucks air, and the thing just fogs. Uh, this doesn't just happen once in a while. I found uh, this happens quite often actually on older units. So the first thing I want to do is pull this apart and I want to look in the cylinder and make sure it's not scored. Now the four screws that came out of the starter housing, those were a fine thread screw, so don't mix them up with these other three screws that are a coarse screw. We'll uh, just take a quick look here and remove that muffler guard. Take a look here again at how bad that carburetor is loose on there. But we can't get at the two screws. The whole thing's got to be taken apart to, to get at them. So we're going to put our handy dandy scrunch on here and pop this spark plug out. Then we'll grab our inspection light and take a look inside. See what it looks like in there. And in this case I don't see any scoring. And uh, I guess the next step, as long as we're this far, a guy might as well just pull the muffler off. I mean, if you're going to go through this, why waste your time pulling it apart any farther if you pull the muffler off and find a big score? The nice thing about this repair, if you're doing it yourself, is you don't need any parts. You just need your time. If you follow along on this, it's it's pretty simple. You know, if you got some Torx tools, you can do it yourself. So we're going to take a look in there, and we didn't see any scoring, so we're going to put the muffler back on. And the uh, technical spec for the torque on these screws is just uh, one light ugga dugga and a twist. There you go. So the next thing that's got to happen is we're going to take the impeller side of the housing apart. Now, depending on what year your blower is, the screw that I just took out there, sometimes it's got a knob on it, sometimes you need a screwdriver to take it apart. You know, this one had a 3 8 on one side and a 7 16 on the other. These other remaining seven screws are all just a coarse thread screw. Same as the screw that the three screws that you took off on the other side. So once you have all the screws out, this cover is going to lift right off, and there's no uh, nothing attached to it, so it's no big deal. This 13 millimeter nut that holds the impeller on is. Uh, bass backwards threads so don't start cranking on it like you're going to loosen it because you're actually tightening it now take a very close look not at this screw here which is by the way a t25 same as you know i've been using this t25 to take everything apart but they're actually four millimeter look how loose that screw is right there that's a key that one of those three engine mounting tabs is broken now, a lot of times, I'll just say, you know, hey, the block's broken. If I saw any questionable wear in the cylinder, maybe we walk away at that point. But for the small amount of money that this repair is going to be, you know, if a person can get another season out of the blower, it's probably a worthwhile effort. Now, there's only four screws here holding this engine on from this side. Actually, there's only three screws. There's only four screws you can access, and three of them have to come out. 
and pay attention because two of them are coarse thread and one of them is fine thread so you got to make sure you put the fine thread back in the right hole there you go coarse and fine so what we've done now is we've basically separated the engine block from the housing and this will allow you to get a four millimeter wrench in and tighten one of the two screws that is the actual problem here but without removing the gas tank you can't uh, you can't get at the second one so there's one of the gas tank screws and the other one's down there where I was just shining the light same coarse thread screw that you found in the other 10 12 locations just kind of pop that gas tank out of the way but remember the fuel lines are still connected to it and the carburetor so here's the screw that you want to tighten you see how loose it was and there's one right next to it I mean uh, right there that is the job where we have fixed the machine now we just got to put it back together uh, normally this is pretty easy here's that broken engine block I was talking about that one tab so is it safe to run it that way sure I don't know it might vibrate a little bit until one of the other mounts breaks uh, because of the enclosed impeller uh, I would think that a person would be fine if something let loose odds are it's going to vibrate really bad before anything breaks and you'll have time to let your finger off the trigger and give it up so now we're just trying to uh, Get the engine line back up. There's a couple slots and grooves. Plus, we're kind of working around that broken motor mount. You know, I took the screw out of there, so it's a little bit loose floating around in there. So we want to get that all lined up. And once it is, we'll put the three screws back in from this side. Remember where the coarse one went? I can't remember if it was one coarse and two fine, or two coarse and one fine. Looks like that one's a fine thread that's going in. And that one's a fine thread that's going in. That one we'd never remove. We're just checking it to make sure it was tight. So now we'll go back and put in the engine mounts from this side. This one's just going to hold that broken piece in place and the other two to hold the engine in place the way it belongs. You know, we sell a ton of these blowers. I don't know how many of these I've had to fix like this, and certainly not any new ones. So I don't know if it was a known problem that Husky may have addressed. But the screws that we tightened up, if I remember right, they were coarse thread screws. And, uh, it's not like it's a machine deal where you can get them really tight. So this piece fell off when I flipped it over. I should have taken it off when I took the impeller off, but it can really only go on one way if it's going to mate with that impeller. And you'll see here in a second what I'm talking about. I'll just get all that hardware out of the way. But that's where it uh, lines up with the uh, impeller. Simple stuff right there. Flat washer concave washer and our bass backwards nut. The torque spec for this is three medium uggadugas, no more, no less. Now we can go ahead and put the other half of the housing back together. Seven coarse thread screws and the one screw that holds the blower tube in place. You see I got a compression gauge sitting on the bench. I mean that's certainly another option but once you have it torn down as far as we did just pull them off and take a look at the piston and see what it looks like. The visual uh, 
signs of scoring are more important than any compression numbers that we might see. Put your spark plug back in, throw the boot back on. Now one thing I didn't talk about when we took that half off was that the throttle linkage was loose. So lay the trigger in there so you can see how it's oriented. And then uh, the rod can really only go one way if you're doing it, doing it right here. The hook goes in on the trigger. And the other end, uh, there's only one hole on that carburetor linkage. Just stick it in the hole and lay the trigger over the pin. Done. This muffler shield, it's got a round section that goes around the tube. And if you looked at it from the other side, it would be obvious that it's got a, a catch that it's got to go over. And just it's just a matter of dropping this side cover back on. And if it doesn't want to drop in place up there by the handle, right there, that lever I just moved, that cruise control lever, throttle lock, whatever you want to call it, sometimes you got to move that, turn it on a little bit in order for the for it to clear a stop that's on the, on the handle up there. Now we'll put our starter on. Remember if you uh, if the screws were separated from the starter, the, these are the fine thread screws. Now, if the machine ran properly before that carburetor came loose and nobody got involved with making adjustments to the carburetor, then uh, theoretically, after we get this tube on there, we should be able to uh, just fire this thing up and be good to go. So let's put this lock on the tube. This is a locking nut right here, okay? That just has to be on the bolt. It's just so that you don't lose the nut and bolt that's holding the tube on there. That's far enough right there. Plus, I put an extra ugga dug on there so it ain't coming loose anyway. Well, we'll prime it, we'll choke it, and we'll see what we got. That's encouraging. There it is. That's all the response you need out of one of these. So there you go. If you've got a Husqvarna 125B blower, and uh, you got a loose carburetor and some basic hand tools, uh, you can fix yours too. Just make sure that piston and cylinder aren't scored before you go through all the effort. So if you like this kind of content, you want to see more videos like this, um, stay tuned to this channel. Thanks for watching. Later.